Hi guys, welcome back to the Kratos Nutrition YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk to you about everybody's favourite exercise, the burpee. With the CrossFit Games open on the horizon, we know that burpees have been a staple in the open for the last 10 years. And they may not look as complicated as things like ring, bar muscle ups, chest to bars, toes to bar, handstand push ups or handstand walking, but they are just as important in terms of scores on the board. We've seen burpees coming up in many different variations, those being a six inch touch overhead, bar facing burpees, burpees over bar laterally, burpee box jumps and burpee box jump overs. And we've also seen burpees coming up in varying volumes. Those of you that have been in the sport long enough will remember 2012 where it was literally just seven minutes of burpees to a six inch overhead target. So why is this important? Think of burpees like we think of rowing. If you were put in rowing in the middle of a workout and they were with strengths and with, we with weaknesses, then you'd want to pace yourself through that movement. You wouldn't expect to go hell for leather as fast as you can through a rowing piece, depending on what that workout looks like. This is the same with burpees. You don't always have to go hell for leather. It's about conserving that energy and being as efficient as possible. And it's also about identifying your strengths and weaknesses within that workout. If burpees are coming up and they're coupled with a movement that you're particularly good at, you might be able to conserve some energy on those burpees and attack your strength. If they're coming up with something you're not very good at, you might need to go a little bit harder on those burpees to make up some time. So what does that look like? Is it simply a case of repeating the same movement in the same way and just taking a little bit longer between those reps? Well, not necessarily. We've seen in the open in the past that they've stipulated that you are allowed to step up and step out of burpees. That there conserves a lot of energy and could potentially allow you to be more efficient and keep your heart rate down in a more aerobic pace. So there are different techniques that you want to practice when you're working on a burpee. You want to be able to have a sprint pace, a race pace, which is what I consider to be a standard Metcon pace, and a conserving energy pace, something that you can keep steady and recover at despite what's going on around you. And although the standards remain the same, you're still getting your chest and thighs to the floor and standing up or either jumping over an object or jumping and reaching and touching an object. The way that you can do that changes dramatically. It goes without saying that if we're stepping out and stepping in in that burpee rather than jumping in and jumping out, it is gonna be slower. But is that necessarily a bad thing? If we look at something like the seven minutes of burpees, for instance, I can guarantee you that the best strategy is not to go as hard as you possibly can and try and hang on. Again, using that rowing analogy, around that seven minute mark is a good way of comparing it to a 2000 meter row. You're not gonna PB your 2K row by going as hard as you possibly can in the first 500 meters. It's about maintaining a steady pace. So stepping in and stepping out might be a better option for you to keep that heart rate low and allow you the opportunity then to sprint in those last 30 seconds and make up some extra reps. This is equally important when we look at the standards when it comes to things like jumping over barbells or dumbbells and over boxes. Sometimes they'll specify that it needs to be a two-footed jump clearly over the barbell or dumbbell, or it might need to be a box jump. Equally, they might say that you're allowed to step over or step up to that box. Same thing rings true. If you're able to step up to the box, step over that dumbbell or barbell, that is gonna save an awful lot of energy in terms of how much you're putting out every rep. Yes, it will be slower, but it'll also be more consistent. Other things we're gonna have a look at is how we lower ourselves to the floor and how we get ourselves up using our upper body as well. We can do this really, really fast, or we can do this controlled as well, segmenting those movements ever so slightly and conserving energy along the way. So we're gonna have a look at a couple of different techniques here and ones that I've used in the past in different workouts. You can compare the speeds here, but also think of them in terms of the energy demand, how much we're actually asking our body to do and how quickly we're trying to do it, how sustainable that would be in a 10, 15 or 20 minute workout. Okay guys, so we're gonna break things down from slow to fast. So the slowest variation and therefore the most controlled and sustainable variation would be to step out and step in to that burpee. So that's gonna look something like this. And obviously if we're jumping over something, to something, up to something, we're not gonna go through everyone individually, but we'll go, I'm gonna go through three or four reps there and you can sort of see how slow and controlled this movement actually is. Obviously you can vary that leg that you're stepping up and out with. I tend to find that if you're using the same one every time you get a bit of consistency, but you will get a little bit more fatigue in that one side. The next stage for me would be 
to jump down and step up. That way you're using gravity on your side. You're allowing yourself to drop and it's no extra effort from that side of things. It's a little bit quicker, but you're still controlling on the way up. And as you can see, that's a little bit quicker. Like I said, using gravity and allowing yourself to drop to that bottom position each time. Next stage from that is obviously to jump down and jump up, bringing both feet up together at the same time. Again, this is a little bit faster, but a little bit less sustainable and a little bit harder. Some things to consider here, depending on how fatigued you get with burpees in your upper body, is breaking down that press up motion ever so slightly. So if we come to the side, I'll show you a couple of different variations that we can do in terms of our upper body movement for our burpees. So if you're confident with that upper body, you know that that's not gonna be a fatigue or an issue. Dropping down and pressing up violently is allowing you to get those feet up and free up some space. In one movement, as I'm still pressing, bringing my feet up to my hands. If your upper body is something that fatigues a little bit more during a burpee, we can break down that press up the same as we would normally scale a push up. Okay, so all we're gonna do is push up to our knees, that then limits the amount of uh, weight that we're putting through our upper body. Obviously I've done that slowly to show you what I mean, but I'm there, I'm taking a little bit of extra weight off that upper body. So I'm gonna do two or three reps like that for you. And all you're doing there is just allowing yourself a little bit less weight to go through that upper body each rep. Obviously, as we said, there are different variations that we can see here. We've seen bar facing burpees, we've seen lateral over bar burpees, we've seen burpee box jump overs. Depending on the standards here, I would always suggest that stepping over uh, an implement is easier in terms of coordination for starters when you're getting tired, but also the amount of effort you're doing. Yes, it is that little bit slower, but if the workout is long enough, you're gonna make up time elsewhere. Equally, if you're particularly good at burpees over box or a movement like that, I'm not telling you to go slower than you naturally want to. It's about finding your pace and sticking to your natural rhythm. Okay guys, so those are the different types of burpees that you can use in a workout. Obviously, as we said, some are gonna conserve more energy, some are better if you wanna go a little bit faster and against the clock. Things to consider with the open on the horizon is that we're almost guaranteed to see burpees. I think it's only been one year in the last 10 where there hasn't been a burpee programmed. So, if you know that they're not a strength of yours, now is the time to get practicing. A great way of doing this is to work on the minute. Give yourself a set number of reps to work for five, six, seven, eight, up to 10 minutes, and equal that number of reps each time. Once you can complete that number of reps in 10 minutes, add a rep and start again at five. It's a really good way of building volume, but also improving your technique and getting everything dialed in, ready for the open. I hope you found that useful, guys. Thanks once again for joining us on the Kratos Nutrition YouTube channel. This is probably gonna be the last one that we're gonna be do, doing here in HQ in Cardiff for a while, as we're off to Aylesbury for the season. Um, so we'll catch up with you next week from there. Take care, guys. <laughs>